Hey guys, welcome to the shack. Today, I want to introduce you to a new machine that I've been trying out for a few days here in the shack. Uh, it is the Acemer P1. Uh, this is a 10 watt machine, and it's uh, it's got a few things that I want to point out to you. I'm going to go over. There's a couple of things that I like about it, a couple of things that I'm not crazy about, but I'm just going to give you my preliminary review so far on this machine. Like I said, I've done a lot of cutting and a lot of jobs, uh, just little jobs with it. And so far it's doing pretty well. So stick around and we're gonna go over some of those things. All right guys, to start off with, the machine is pretty robust as far as ruggedness and, and strength of the machine. It's got the doubled up rails here instead of the singles. Uh, the front, you know, if you got this laser cut or, you know, laser or plasma cut metal in the front here, it's got the nice little badging on the front, nice big bold white badging up there. Uh, but it looks good. I like the appearance of it. Uh, one thing that I will point out is I haven't done anything to this machine other than put it together and put it on the table. Uh, the one thing that I did do is I've removed or didn't put on the, uh, the little cone that goes over there, the protective cone. Now, that's a personal preference as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I know safety-wise, it's a good idea to leave those on there, but to me, they get in the way. But with this one, it's similar to some of the other machines as it has magnetics that hold it up there. Uh, it did come ported and, and installed with the, the air assist nozzle. The machine came with an air assist nozzle and the elbow to connect the quarter inch uh, tubing to. Uh, the one thing that the factory didn't do that I wish they had have done uh, is the drag chain is already installed. It came pre-installed from the factory, but it did not have an airline in there. So I had to go in. I, luckily, I had some really flexible tubing that I was able to put in there, and it does not interfere with the functioning of the, of the drag chain. Now, with this machine, uh, I put it together with very little adjustment. Uh, the belts, you do have to put the belts on, but I just kind of tension them by, you know, memory. Uh, put those on. It does have the connecting linkage, which you'll have to, you know, loosen one of the sides of the linkage and just roll it a little bit, make sure everything syncs up, give that thing a chance to get in line, and then tighten it back up. Not a big deal. Uh, the one advantage that I do see over this machine over some of the others that I've tried out is on the rollers here on the, uh, where the, where the tube it is that goes from the front to the back of the extrusions. Instead of having the, like, tripod effect with the rollers uh, this thing actually does have two up top and two down at the bottom and what that gives you over a lot of other machines is there's no twist in this gantry there's no movement in the gantry uh, i do like that better than a lot of the machines that i've been been seeing uh, it gives it a little more strength and i think it's also going to keep it from having as much variations as it moves especially if you start running up into the higher speeds uh, one of the things that i'm kind of a stickler of and this is just something that i like I don't like having to use the, the little cards that you put under there and you lower the laser down on it. I prefer a kickstand. Well, they did include a kickstand on this one and it's got a magnet that holds it up out of the way once you, once you focus it. So that is really handy. Uh, the way that this machine focuses, and I wanna throw a piece of material in here just to show you my, so you can see it a little better. Once you put the leg down, you have a little knob here uh, for the Z axis. And once you get the Z, once you get the Z axis adjusted, you just flip that leg back up. So it's relatively easy. I like the kickstand and I like the knob. Very few machines that I've dealt with had both. So they've done a good job on this in my opinion, because, and, and this, this one, I've had some others that had the adjustment that had, you know, they had a tendency to when you let them up and down, they'd have a little slack in them and you could actually move the laser. Uh, this one doesn't do that. This one is very, uh, is very tight, uh, doesn't give. So whenever you quit turning the knob, it pretty much, the laser head stays where it is. Uh, it doesn't fall, it doesn't rise up. The, the laser module itself is on there with a few screws. It's pretty, pretty secure, pretty tight. So as far as that part of it, that is an improvement in my opinion. I love the, the knob for Z-axis adjustment instead of having to loosen, loosen a tension screw. I like that. Uh, combine that with the flip up kickstand and that's a, I, I give them a 10 out of 10 on the focusing ability. The only way they could have made this better was if it was automatic, but you know, it didn't happen. 
Uh, the drag chain that it comes with is really on there and engineered in a way to where it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't snag. Uh, I like I like the way they've got it laid out. It has some little tiny screws that you have to uh, put in the drag chain when you're putting it together. Those were a little cumbersome. Uh, you might want to make sure you have a magnetically charged Allen wrench to put those in because uh, I kept I kept dropping those little guys. Uh, but other than that, the the, the assembly is simple. Uh, with good luck and not dropping anything or not getting confused and missing a step, I'm going to say it's probably a 20 minute put together, uh, all total. And that's, and that's just taking your time, you know, going easy. Uh, the hardest part, like I said, was these little, these little screws that hold this, uh, drag chain on. And it has drag chains on both the X and the Y axis. The cable management is really nice. Uh, the strapping and stuff, there's not a lot of stuff to strap. Everything is hidden inside the chassis here. There's no exposed wires. You've got a couple of inches where it goes to the limit switches because yes, this one does have limit switches. It only has the two. Uh, so it has a limit switch here and here, which is the home location. And yes, guys, it homes in the back left corner, which I like that. Uh, I usually set my machines to go to the back left corner anyway to get them out of the way. But this machine comes from the factory, the home location, not the return to location. The home location is in the back left corner. So I think that's a plus because that gives you this, this, this whole area uh, is free. You can get in and out of there and access it accordingly. Uh, like I said, it does have the, the e-stop. Uh, it has the lockout switch, which I, I don't usually use, but I will tell you, uh, I checked, and this is the same key that several of my other machines use because I was a little worried I was gonna start losing these keys, uh, but I've got a box full of them now. So uh, the machine didn't come with a uh, air assist pump. I have been running it on shop air just by running a little jumper over here to power it. Uh, and it does a really good job with that. But uh, so far it is surprising me for a 10 watt machine, how much power it does have. And we're gonna go over that in just a second. The last thing I wanna point out to you guys, and I wanna stress this, the one problem I did have with putting this machine together, it wasn't putting the machine together mechanically, but when I went to use it with light burn, it had some issues, okay? It took me a few minutes of working to figure out what the problem was on the controller setting, but there was a, a, a setting on the controller that I had to manipulate in order to get it to work properly. And uh, if you need that file or if there's a problem, if you get one of these machines and you need that file, let me know and I'll try to get that to you, uh, drop it through the cloud to you. Uh, but all I did is went in and changed a few settings in the controller itself. Uh, I made a backup copy of the original settings, went in, made some changes to try to correct the issue. Once I found a successful settings that worked, I uh, exported those and I have those available if you need them. Uh, I don't know if mine is an isolated incident, maybe something went bad at the, the factory or you know, when I connected it, maybe something went, went bad with light burn communicating with it. But anyway, I did have to make some changes to the uh, light burn configuration in order to get it to work. And that's the controller settings, not necessarily the light burn settings. So it wasn't, it wasn't my installation of the light burn wasn't the problem. It was, it was something glitched up with the controller, but got it worked out. The machine's working great. And now guys, we're gonna talk about some of the power and the capabilities of the machine. All right guys, one more thing that I wanna mention to you, setting related. Uh, this machine is Wi-Fi compatible. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi antenna and it does broadcast an SSID so that you can connect to it with an app or whatever. I haven't played around with trying to connect that to Lightburn yet. Uh, I, I kind of tinkered with it for a minute, but I couldn't get the settings to work right. And so I've kind of abandoned that for the moment and just wanted to go ahead and get this preliminary video out. And if I figure that out, I'll drop a video later on and kind of update you and maybe drop that in the, in the description of this one. But guys, for a 10 watt machine, uh, and, and everybody expects 10 watt machines to be really good at engraving. And uh, so I did a little gradient. This is a light burn uh, power settings. And I did a little gradient right here. And that's gonna be, uh, that's the results, all right? And looking at the results, you can tell that even at speeds, if you're running 100% output, which I do uh, with diodes, if you're running 100% output, it's get a really, good engrave all the way down to uh, 130 millimeters per second, 
which is a little insane for a 10 watt. Typically with my 10 watt machines, I have to run somewhere in the ballpark of 80 millimeters per second, uh, millimeters per second at 100% output in order to get a good black burn with a 10 watt. But this guy's doing it, like I said, all the way down there at 130 at 100%. So that was really impressive. Uh, but what impresses me the most out of this machine is, as you all know, I started my channel. I started with an X-Tool D1 10 watt. And so 10 watt was kind of my go-to back then. And as time progressed, I needed something that could cut faster. Typically with a 10 watt, I was running seven millimeters a second, doing three to four passes on the material that I use in order to get a good cut. Well, guys, this machine kind of blew me away with the capabilities. Uh, and you can see that, okay, this thing is knocking these boxes out at 100% power, seven millimeters per second, it's, I mean, it's, it's blasting it. So you get up to eight, nine, and 10, it's kind of out of its range, uh, it stops dropping. But, you know, I would say at the slowest, just to be cautious, if you ran 100% power at six millimeters per second, one pass, you would have good success with this material. Uh, like I said, most of the 10 watt machines that I've tested and that I've played with took multiple passes to cut this material, even at that speed. Now, you know, down to four and three, uh, a lot of the machines can do it, but without air assist, that gets kind of risky with a you know fire hazard. Uh, but I did run this with shop air, uh, so they didn't send me a pump with it, so I just ran me a little jumper over here, ran it with shop air, and that's the results. I was getting running the same air pressure that I run on my primary enclosure over here. So I was really impressed with that. Like I said, for, for a 10 watt machine to be dropping those squares at those speeds uh, is it's not that common. So as far as the, the, the beam size and the focus that they've got, to, you know, the machine set to do, I think it does a really good job. All right. And so, you know, speed tests and cut tests, those are, those are you know, cool to do. But the real, the real test is when you start doing graphics that have really small pieces and you have really intricate cuts. Uh, that's when a lot of times a machine will kind of show some of its failures. Uh, and so I did a couple of cuts with this thing, just some small Easter themed cuts. And I got some really good results. So this is a, a little reef centerpiece that I, that I sell and make. And it's got some pretty fine detail. You can see there's some pretty small stuff. Well, I ran this actually at about seven millimeters a second, which was a little, a little fast. So I've decided to slow it down to about six with this machine. And on really, really fine stuff, maybe even go down to five just to make sure you get that, that, that completely clean drop. Uh, but that did pretty well. So I was like, well, let me try something with a little more fine detail because we all know that with fine detail, a lot of times the really, really small pieces tend to catch fire burn up or become really really crispy and you, i don't know if you can see that one little let me see if i can get it to focus on it that one little piece up there those things are tiny and didn't have any issues um uh, no 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 charring it didn't burn any of the pieces the little pieces of grass down at the bottom by the bunny i mean those things come to a really sh fine sharp point and i didn't get any burn so that was really good uh the the, the precision of the point of the machine is uh, I think what is enabling it to be able to do this. Uh, and so not to leave out engraving for a project, I did another Easter themed engraving and I actually ran this at 100 millimeters, whoop, I dropped it, at 100 millimeters per second, 100% output, and I got some really good dark burn. And this stuff typically doesn't, it typically doesn't burn that dark, but you know, it, it done a really good job. So. All together, guys, the performance that I've got out of it, the, the cost of the machine, the extra, you know, like with the drag chains, the air assist nozzle already built on it. If you're in the market for a 10 watt, I definitely would give this guy a look. Uh, it's, it's, it's no slouch as far as the power goes. The ruggedness and the simplest, simplistic design, I think that would go to help a lot of people that, that struggle sometimes with adjustments and keeping a machine running. I think the simplicity of it is a plus for that matter. Uh, it does not have a remote controller with it, but there is a small, the mini HDMI cable connection up here. And I'm thinking that's probably for a uh, remote, like some of the other ones have the offline controller. 
I'm pretty sure you could plug one in there and access the machine. Unfortunately, all I have are the full-size HDMI connections, so I didn't get to test that theory out to see. Uh, but all together, guys, solid machine for a 10 watt. It actually impressed me. I don't typically take 10 watt machines anymore for testing as much. I, I mean, I know a lot of you guys are still in the 10 watts, and if you're new to the new to the hobby and you're just getting started, you haven't generated enough revenue. 10 watts probably we're going to end up landing. That's where I started off at because that was a that was a purchase that I could I could handle the burn of the purchase. And then once I got in and started making a little money with the machine and made my money back, that's when I decided, you know what, I can go bigger. And so, but for a beginner machine, guys, I will say this one's simple and uh, it's, it's very simplistic. Other than the one hang up that I had with the software, uh, getting light burn to work with it, I haven't had any issues uh, at all. So that was a that was a, that was a bit of a headache for a while there. But once we got through that, everything's going well. Hey right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Uh, like I said, I know some of you may get tired of the product reviews, but guys, there's a lot of people trying to get into the hobby that want to try to get them a little side hustle going. And I speak from experience when I say the review videos on these machines really do help uh, because my buddy Steve was actually one of those people when I got ready to get the XTool D1. Uh, I went and watched his videos to kind of see what he thought about it and get a feel for what the machine was capable of. And uh, so, you know, I'm going to go off, off on a limb and say that there are people that appreciate these videos. Uh, if you like talking about lasers or anything lasers, remember, Steve and I are doing our Sunday nights at 7 p.m. And that's going to be 7 p.m. Central. Steve and I do a live show. Uh, the live show also has a Facebook group that's affiliated with it where you guys that are kind of into the lasers and, and are knowledgeable about, about lasers can come in, exchange information, show off some of your projects, uh, you know, shoot the breeze with me and Steve, uh, maybe send a picture or two of some of your projects. It's just a, it, it's just a, a fun time, guys. Uh, learning and enjoying what we do and that's what it's all about so if you haven't already go to Facebook you can you can look for the clack shack and also go over to the laser engraver community page and uh, go ahead and, and sign up for that and come visit with us Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Central and Steve and I we, we promise to have something to talk about it may not be nothing you want to hear but we promise we'll have something to talk about but anyway guys until next time be safe and have a good day